Today I want to share with you how to make a healthy make-ahead noodle soup mix in a jar. This is a shelf-stable pantry staple. Hi sweet friends! I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, I don't know if you've seen these Knorr soup mixes at the grocery store. K-N-O-R-R, -R, I believe is how it's spelt. And they have a variety of dry soup mixes. But I really like to make that type of thing homemade because often when you look at the box, the ingredients are often things that I'm not comfortable having in a traditional foods kitchen. Plus, making your own dried soup mixes is very easy to do and costs a fraction of what it would cost to buy them already pre-made. Now today we're going to make a noodle soup mix in a jar. And what I've got here is one pound or one box of thin spaghetti. And the reason I'm using the thin spaghetti is if you're familiar with the Knorr mix, they use a very small noodle like this. But you can certainly use any kind of pasta that you like. Uh, you could use the corkscrew, the bow ties, any ones that you like, uh, even you could even use egg noodles if you want, anything like that will work. The only difference will be that if you use a larger type pasta or egg noodle, you're probably looking at only needing about two cups versus an actual pound, and this is more than two cups uh, of the thin spaghetti. Now we'll go over the rest of these ingredients, but I just want to let you know you don't need to write anything down. If you open the description under this video, you'll see the word recipe and a link. That'll take you over to my website, Mary's Nest, the same name as my YouTube channel, uh, where you can read the recipe and instructions online, or you can print it out. Now the rest of the ingredients that we're going to need are a half a cup of dried vegetables. Now, what I'm using is a mirepoix mix. It's carrots, onions, and celery. And this is something that I've dehydrated myself. And I have a video, uh, which I'll link in the iCards and in the description below, where I show you how to make this yourself if you have a dehydrator. It's a little harder to do in an oven. Carrots and celery can be harder to dehydrate or, or dry in an oven. So this uh, was done in a dehydrator. Uh, if you don't have a dehydrator uh, and you want to go ahead and just make this mix without any vegetables, any dried vegetables, you can certainly do that and you can add your vegetables vegetables in after the fact. And I'll explain all of this in greater detail in the written recipe. But if you do dehydrate your own vegetables, uh, you can use those here. You, all you need is a half a cup. You can use any type that you like. And if you do want to make this with dehydrated vegetables, but you don't have a dehydrator, you can buy most vegetables dehydrated. Uh, you just have to look around. You might have them at your grocery store, especially these uh, mirepoix mixes are common, uh, as are dried onions are very easy to find. Um, so in that, you know, definitely check your grocery store and also look online. I'll put some links in the description below uh, to where you can find them online, but check your grocery store because you usually can find a nice mix there. Now I'm gonna skip over the bouillon powder for a minute. We'll discuss that in a second. But the only other ingredients that you're gonna need are a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of ground black pepper. And if you like a little spice, you can add a quarter of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, which is what I have here. Then, if you want to add any other seasonings, it's really up to you. This is very flexible. You can add maybe a half a teaspoon of onion powder or a half a teaspoon of garlic powder or a teaspoon of dried parsley. Uh, there are all different things you can add. You could add a half a teaspoon of dried rosemary. And, you know, those are a little stronger than parsley. Uh, so you wanna be careful, but you could add, you know, a half a teaspoon of dried rosemary or a half a teaspoon of dried thyme. Any herbs or spices that you wanna add that are in their dried form can be added to this mix. 
and I'll give some combinations in the written recipe uh, as to proper amounts for the amount we're making here. Uh, but definitely think about what herbs and spices you enjoy and that you would like to add to make it your own. Now let's talk about the bouillon powder. The reason I like to make this mix homemade is because I also make my, my own homemade bouillon powder. And the reason that I like to make it is because I know exactly what's in here. And basically what I do is take bone broth, it can be chicken bone broth, it can be beef bone broth, it can be turkey bone broth, and I will dehydrate it. Now you don't need a dehydrator to do this. You can do this in your oven or in a dehydrator and it works great. And when it's, when the bone broth, or you can also just do broth or stock, whatever you want to do, once it has dried really well, it'll be clear and it'll look like stained glass. And you can just break it up and then you can pulverize it and make your own bouillon powder. And I have videos where I show you how to do this with beef bone broth, chicken bone broth, and I want to talk about a minute, and I want to talk a minute about vegetable broth. Now this is my chicken uh, bouillon powder, my homemade chicken bouillon powder, and this is my vegetable uh, bouillon powder. This is very easy to make. And again, to dry this, you do not need a dehydrator. But what's nice about making your own vegetable bouillon powder is you can make this completely a vegetarian uh, noodle soup mix. I'm going to add chicken bouillon powder and we just all we need is a quarter of a cup. But you can add a quarter of a cup of your vegetable bouillon powder and now you've got the makings of a wonderful vegetable noodle soup. And I don't have it here today, but you could also add your beef, your homemade beef bouillon powder. Now, what if you don't have any bone broth or broth or stock made? And what if you really don't want to dry it? You know, even though you can dry it in your oven, you don't need anything fancy. But say you don't want to do that, you just want to buy some bouillon powder at the store, you can do that. But what I recommend is looking at the different uh, bouillon powders and you want it to be powder, you want it to be in a dry form that are available to you and you want to look at the ingredients and try to avoid those that list MSG or natural flavors uh, because those can often uh, be ingredients that can cause problems for people and many times people are on this journey moving from a processed foods kitchen to a traditional foods kitchen because they're looking for uh, resources of foods that or maybe these certain you know prepared or processed foods were causing them some uh, distress maybe a headache maybe intestinal discomfort whatever the case may be and they're looking for foods and ingredients that'll be more soothing to their bodies and cause them less problems so if you are not ready to be making your own bone broth and then drying it and making your own bouillon powder say you're at the very beginning of your journey just try to look for those bouillon powders that are a little more natural and if you do use a store-bought bouillon powder then you're going to want to omit your salt unless the bouillon powder you buy does not contain salt but most do so if you do use a store-bought one just leave that salt out now as i shared i'm using a chicken bouillon powder what if i wanted to add chicken to this noodle soup i recommend that when you get ready and we'll talk about this in a minute when we get ready to turn this into a soup that's probably the best time to add in some chicken. And this is a great mix to use when you've got some leftover chicken. And just add, go ahead and add in whatever little bits of chopped fresh, chopped chicken, cooked chicken that you have left over. You can even, if you've got some canned chicken in your extended pantry or even in your working pantry, you can open that and add that into this when you're ready to actually make this soup. I'm not a fan of dehydrating chicken and adding it to our jar because dehydrated meats really have somewhat of a limited shelf life and it's not often recommended to dehydrate them. You can make jerky, which is kind of pliable and, you know, 
you can enjoy that. But putting that into any kind of mix like this would not work well. And if you're just trying to dehydrate chicken, I think it just shortens the shelf life and I also think it doesn't always come out very well. I want to be honest with you, but if you've had more luck than me and that's something that you want to do, I'd really be interested in hearing about uh, your success with that in the comments below. Now, if you want uh, to use freeze-dried chicken, you certainly could. Uh, I know a lot of people are starting to get their own freeze dryers and I don't have one, but if you have freeze-dried chicken, uh, whether you're doing it yourself or you purchase it, that can certainly be used in something like this. That has a much more longer shelf life and holds up a little better. Well, making this really just involves layering it into your jar and you have some options. You can go ahead and mix this all in the bowl and put it in like that, uh, or you can layer it and make it look a little pretty. Well, I think what I'm gonna do is lay, put it in little layers so it looks very cute. This can also make a very nice gift, uh, especially as we go into Christmas time. And it does look very pretty. And this is one of those things, unlike cake mixes that I, or muffin mixes or cookie mixes, which I've shared with you in the past, that I actually like to go ahead and mix really well rather than layer them uh, before, especially if I'm gonna give them as a gift, because I always worry that the recipient may not uh, mix them as well as they need to be mixed before they add in the wet ingredients. But with a soup mix, it's, com it's completely different. We don't need to worry about that. Now this is very easy to reconstitute and I'll have all of those directions in that printed recipe. Basically all you're gonna do is boil up four quarts of water. Then you're gonna go ahead and dump in, once that water comes to a boil, you're gonna go ahead and dump that in. Uh, the dump this in, you're gonna dump your jar into the boiling water and uh, have it return back up to a boil then turn it down to a simmer and let it simmer for about 20 minutes and then dinner's ready. And this would serve about, uh, it'll make about eight uh, dinner portion sizes of soup. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add in my spaghetti layer here. And if you're adding, if you're not using the dried vegetables and you're using fresh, you'll just wanna go ahead and add those in at the same time. Uh, you go ahead and dump your mix into your boiling water and let the vegetables simmer with everything else for those 20 minutes. And if you wanna add any uh, meat to this, uh, I recommend adding cooked meat. Uh, so if you are going to go with chicken, you would add the chicken in, assuming that it's cooked and chopped up, really in the last few minutes of it simmering because you just need it to be warmed through. And the same with any canned chicken that you might use because that's also cooked uh, when you open the can. Now I'm just adding my dehydrated vegetables, just top this off. Oh, that looks pretty. Now, for storing this, this has a great shelf life, at least six months in your pantry. And you can use, you know, as I said, this is a quart size jar. It's a wide mouth quart size jar. If you're using a canning jar and you've got your uh, lid and your band or your ring, you can use that as your lid. You can use the traditional uh, canning storage lid. This works fine too. I'm really liking the new ball lids that they made that are both leak proof and airtight. These work great because really uh, the secret to giving this a good shelf life is keeping moisture and air out. And if you want, uh, you can even, if you live in a very humid climate, you could even put in a little silica gel pack. Uh, that works great uh, for keeping moisture out. But generally, this with a nice lid put on tight will have a great shelf life. Now, if you'd like more recipes for make-ahead shelf-stable pantry mixes like baking mixes and cookie mixes and a muffin mix and cake mixes and a coffee creamer and a hot cocoa mix, be sure to click on this video over here. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.